Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to continue working on this web page that allows a user to click a button, slide the page away, exposing a sidebar navigation menu. Okay, now this is where we left off. We made the basic page, and my code doesn't have a lot in the head section, or I'm sorry, a lot in the body section, but I do need to add a couple more things. And by the way, if you check the video description, you'll find a hyperlink to this demo file so you can check out the source code. Now, in a second, I'm going to be doing a little JavaScript. And the purpose of that JavaScript is going to be to change a class for the body because sometimes the container or the menu is going to be displayed. Sometimes it's going to be hidden. So in the body tag of my page, I'm going to go ahead and give this a, um, an ID. I'll just call it page body. I'm going to give it a class. I'm going to start off with menu slider hidden because when the visitor comes to the web page that's the way I want it to be I want that menu to be hidden so I'm going to save that and since I have a class on the body I can use these other sections of my style to control how how do I want things styled when the menu is hidden for instance when the menu is hidden menu slider hidden so this is the class of the body tag space container. So how do I want my container to look when the menu slider is hidden? Well, easy enough, I want the left positioning to be zero pixels. If you recall, when I did that container, um, I was messing around, by the way, at the end of the last video, the position is absolute, and I was going to position it zero pixels from the left, 3300 pixels from the left to expose that container. Well, since I'm going to be distinguishing I'm not going to need this for my general purpose rules. In fact, same thing, well, menu slider, that's going to be fine. So when my menu slider is hidden, basically when the body tag has that particular class, that's going to be the left positioning of that container. Now the other thing I'm going to do is when my menu slider is hidden, I'm also going to have a button, my menu button, it's going to have a background image URL of menu.png. And let's see, yeah, that's good for there. Um, just before I turn the recorder on, I got myself a couple of icons. I just saved them over to my desktop. I have a closed PNG file and a menu PNG file. So I'll, I'll display those menu icons as appropriate. So when my menu is hidden, my menu icon will display so that the user knows they can click on that to get the menu. And then when the menu is displayed, the close button will display. Okay, so these are the characteristics of my hidden menu state. Now for my displayed menu state, it's going to be pretty similar. So when my class for my body is menu slider displayed, my container is going to have a left positioning 330 instead of 0, and my menu button is going to have a background image of the close PNG file instead of the menu PNG file. Okay, with the CSS taken care of, what I need to do now is make a couple of small JavaScript functions that are going to change the value of the class attribute in the body of my page and they also are going to be changing the purpose of the button okay so I do have this button here and pretty soon I'm going to have an on click to trigger some particular function well sometimes the button will be to display the menu sometimes the buttons purpose will be to hide the menu so I'm going to change that out so I'm going to move up to the top of my page and I will put my script area right in here Normally this would be on an external file, and I'm going to have two simple functions. My first function is going to be to display the menu. And this function will do two things. Document get element by ID. This is going to be my page body. And I'm going to use the set attribute method to change the class of that body tag to menu slider displayed. And let me zoom out on this just so it's all in one line. I know the font is tiny. Okay, and let me go ahead and copy this line real quick. Paste. This time, this is not, I'm going to be taking the menu button and I'll be changing the 
on click attribute to whatever the name of my other function is going to be. It's probably going to be hide menu. Okay, so clicking the button is going to do two things. It will change the class attribute of my body tag, and it's going to change the on click attribute of my image button, my image, my anchor tag. Let me go ahead and do another function very similar to it. There we go, now I have two functions, and they both do very similar things. They modify the class of the body tag, and they also modify the on click of the anchor tag. So my first function is display menu, so let me make sure my button is going to call that first function. On click, display menu. Go ahead and save that. My menu button. Let's see, I will make it a block element. I'm going to set its width and height be about, uh, eh, that's pretty big. I'll do 40 picks and 40 picks. Now I am putting a background image on this menu button, but I'll take its background size and I'll set that to contain so it's limited within there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that. Browser refresh, and we can see there's my menu button. When I click, menu is exposed, button changes to the X, click back and forth, back and forth. Easy enough. Now back on the code, the little change I want to make too is put in a transition effect. So I think I will head down to my container, because that's the thing that's actually moving. I'm going to put in a transition, and I need to change the left parameter. I'll do it over 300 milliseconds. Ease in, out. Go ahead and save that. Browser refresh. So now we get this exposed menu concept.